Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install an M.2 Wi Fi M key into your motherboard that supports it. Now, there are some specifics that you do need to be aware of with these if you look at them on Amazon, and of course, we will put affiliated links in the video description so you can check them out for yourselves. There are two kind of key types, excuse the pun. So, there is the AX211. Now, this will only work on Intel motherboards with an Intel 12th gen or newer processor. Or alternatively, if you're on AMD or an older Intel processor and your motherboard has the M.2 key, then you can use the AX210, both of which are Wi-Fi 6, so you shouldn't have any problems there. So if you need to add Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to your motherboard, which doesn't come with it pre-installed, then this is a pretty good and relatively inexpensive way of doing it. Another key thing is if you're doing this on a micro ATX motherboard, then normally you don't have a great deal of room with your slots, especially if you've got a graphics card installed. So you don't necessarily want a PCI Express card directly below the fans to impede airflow. So this works out to be a very good way of doing it. So let's get on and take a look at the actual product itself. Now, the one I've got here, the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice this is an AX211. So this is actually for Intel boards only. But for this demonstration purposes, I am using an AMD board. Clearly this won't work, so I do need to order an AX210 model. Just wanted to point out just in case some of you notice it. So the model that I've picked up was uh, relatively inexpensive, around about 16 or 17 pounds here in the UK. Again, links will be in the video description. And what do you get for your money? So you get the M.2 Wi-Fi e-key. This is the little M.2 Wi-Fi card, which goes into the motherboard. You also get two antenna extensions. This I've actually pre-clipped on here. I'll show you some uh, footage later on of how to actually install it. These are extremely fiddly. So if you're looking for a very simple method of doing this, then this probably isn't the easiest. If you buy a pre-assembled PCI Express card, then obviously you don't have to worry about these, but these can be a little bit fiddly as you'll see a little bit later on. These two cables terminate in SMA type connectors and these will attach to the back of your motherboard. So if you've got a motherboard such as we've got here, this is the ASRock B550 Pro 4. This has actually an option for a Wi-Fi model. So they have the Wi-Fi brackets on the back, which we'll take a look at now on the screen. So this is where you will attach your antennas. But don't worry, if you're purchasing this and your motherboard hasn't got it for some reason, or there isn't anything on the rear IO, then it does come with two brackets. So you get a small one for SFX or ITX type builds or small form factor. So this is a what is known as a half height PCI card. And also you get the traditional full height one as well. So this has actually got screw through holes there. So for attaching normal PCI Express cards, but for this, all you need to do is to actually attach the antenna as we'll show you shortly. Being that this is a M.2 card, you also get an included adapter and also you get a screw so you can attach it to your motherboard. Some models may not, so do check the listings, make sure that it shows clearly in the picture what is actually included. There are an awful lot of listings which come with just the actual M.2 card itself, in which case then you need to go and supply the cables, the antenna yourself separately. And speaking of the antennas, you get two high gain ones in this particular one. And these are actually quite nice plastic. And also you've got metal connections there on the end to actually attach to the SMA connectors. So that is what we get inside of the container. So let's take a look at how to actually install this. Now I would definitely recommend the first thing to do is to actually connect the cables to the M.2 card. You're probably seeing this from some footage I did earlier. As you can just see there, that one has just come off. These are actually quite delicate, so do be careful. You should hear or feel a defined click when they actually attach. And potentially for some of you, if you're tinkering with your PC a lot, a little bit of hot glue on the actual connectors after it's been connected might be a good idea. So I'll get this reconnected and then we'll show you how to install it into the motherboard. Okay, so let's uh, get this thing installed. So the first thing we want to do is to remove the screw for the M.2 Wi-Fi slot. Obviously make sure your motherboard has an M.2 Wi-Fi slot. Sometimes they'll be on the board physically here. Alternatively, you may find you've actually got one underneath the, uh, the heat shield or the heat sink for your rear IO. Quite often they're installed there. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video with how to change over one of those. So let's take away the screw first of all. There's the screw removed. So now we can grab our M.2 Wi-Fi card and start off with the card on a little bit of an angle and you can just wiggle it into the slot and it will spring upwards naturally. So don't worry too much about that. 
So then you can get your screw again on the screwdriver, apply a very small amount of pressure just to let it sit down in the slots. And then you can put your screw back in. Don't do it too tight, just so it holds it in place. If you press it, it shouldn't have any movement. So that is that part done. So now what we want to do is to route these cables through to the rear IO. In order to do that, you may need to remove your heat sink at the back here. Although in this one, we've got a little bit of open space there so we can tuck the wires through relatively easily. On each one of the connections, you'll notice there are a hex nut and also a spring washer. So let's undo those to begin with, take those all the way off and also remove the washer. There is another washer on the back. Leave that one in place. Pull the connector through the back of the IO upriser or alternatively, like we said earlier, you can use the PCI Express mounted brackets if you want to. Hold your finger just behind it, put over the spring washer and also the hex nut and tighten it up. You don't need to overly tighten it, although you can if you want to use a pair of pliers or a socket wrench to try and tighten it up fully. Again, pull this all the way through and then just apply a little bit of pressure on the back. You can put on your grip washer and spring washer. You can put these in front or behind, depending on your bracket. You may find it easier or it lines up nicer if you put all of the washers on the front section. And with those two both in place, now we can grab our antenna and screw those on. And then you can choose to adjust your antenna in whichever orientation you wish. And there we go. That is pretty much it. A little bit of cable management for the wires. You can generally tuck them up inside underneath the heat sink. There are some included cable ties in this particular model we've got to aid with cable management. But again, you can uh, pretty much do whatever you want with them. Just poke them up inside and you should be good. So there we go, here is the finished product. We've now got our M.2 Wi-Fi key installed in our motherboard. We've got our antennas routed and also with cables are in place and uh, we're ready to connect to the Wi-Fi on a motherboard that previously didn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But I think that's gonna wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.